understand that the reason that we're here, the reason that we're studying is, is because we have a work to do. We mm -hmm. live the fall of humanity. Mm -hmm. And in order to uplift anyone else, the first person, the first individual that must be uplifted is ourselves. Yes. And so by taking in this information, by putting yourself into a situation to be able to do this, you're actually doing that work right now. So, you know, the great teacher is going to introduce a lot of uh, principles, a lot of information. Uh, please write. You know, if there's a word that you don't understand, write it down. Um, also, interject, you know, questions. Um, because the more questions, a lot of times, the better that way the information comes out. Um, also, so, I mean, we're going to have dictionaries here. We're going to have any and everything that we can do to make sure that the information gets to you in a way that's applicable. Not just from a rhetoric standpoint, but actually something that can be used so that when you leave here, you can not only understand and introduce it into your life uh, from a principle and action standpoint, but then even as a greater one to be able to start introducing it to other people. Uh, because what it is, is provable. This is not about belief. This is not about I think. It's moving into an understanding or a degree of I know. You only know by being able to prove and show the historical evidence that was preserved for you at this moment to be introduced to you. So with that, I'll bring up the uh, great teacher, um, Mess, Master Teacher Taj. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Because <laughs> you set it up real well for the seriousness of this topic. So uh, with that said, I'm going to ask before we bring up Brother Taj. Everybody silence their cell phones. We have to talk to somebody, please go out of the room. Allow your neighbor to extend the love and compassion to others and allow everybody to be able to hear the conversation. Um, you can feel free if you need to get some more food or whatever to quietly exit, come back and forth. Restrooms, because uh, I forgot to mention that. I think it's over there. I don't think we're yes. yeah. yeah. it's oh, yeah. out the door. Out around. the door. Okay. Uh, please take notes. Please take notes. Very important. Give us a hand. Yeah. Remember, and this is true. When mother cures the problem, we're all cured. Wow. Right. That's the key. Is the camera rolling? No. not what people claim. If we're going to solve the problems of the planet, we must become honorable to the honor of our mothers and our fathers. And we must tell the truth about all things. The earth is steeped in lies and falsehood for Roman conquest. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But for the brothers, give a hand to your mothers. For Keep in mind, all government is based on matriarchy, even though they play the Pope game. One of the things I recognize with most people, particularly when we're trying to solve problems, we were talking about this actually on the way up, is that the masses do not know history. No. And they don't know history and law goes together. Keep that in mind. Like your left leg and your right leg history and jurisprudence, which is the superior category of law, go together. The disadvantage that we have as a people is that those principles have deliberately been held back from people of Asiatic African descent for control purposes. Do not get preoccupied pointing your finger at the European even though he has an agenda, for it is many of your own who have been working with them to enslave you. And we understand that slavery is used connotatively. 
because it actually deals with, with the Slovakians. It's really an identity. And so when it's used from an identity perspective, if you're seeking remedy, understand that you're declared incompetent. Are we clear? So you were bound to free men. The other issue, and I would like to see another picture up there, and I don't know if I have it with me. I'll try to find it. And this is with um, Obama coming through the double doors, representing the higher self and the lower self, mm -hmm. with Michelle wearing a red dress with the Moorish flag mm -hmm. to the left. Mm -hmm. That's after he had also made the declarations to the committees and to representatives of the nations of the world that the American Constitution is derived from Muslim law. One of the first issues with the Asiatics here is that they don't know that they're standing on Africa. The concept that has been promoted is that that's Africa alone. Everybody in the world, particularly in any secret society, skull and bones, any of your Shriner, Masons, ETC, DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, Knights of Columbus, Knights Templar, Knights of Malta, ETC, all of them know that the land is Morocco. Mm. That the United States is a corporation company, military arm for the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors and Yahudi, mispronounced as Jew, both of which is you. Mm. That's the foundation of the entire world's politics. If anybody's talking to you about bringing remedy to you economically and politically and don't give you the foundation of the real politics of the world is only playing with you. It's not personal. Let's deal with reality. If you want to fix things, you got to deal with facts. You cannot deal with emotions, how you feel, biases, who you like, who you don't like, etc. Take all that stuff, throw it out the door. Just deal with facts, because only truth is going to solve things. Are we clear? And the purity of your heart will determine your connection to the electrical grid that's by nature on the planet for every living species. We have been disconnected. People have called it a lack of spiritual connection. It's because the masses don't get spirituality. You understand that? Only the imams, the rabbis, the rabbinate, the reverends, the PhDs, all of our PhDs, and every last one of them are Gnostics. So don't get it twisted and don't get biased because I belong to this club or you belong to that club. It's a game for the masses. The masses have never been given religion. Don't take it from an insulting perspective. It's just the truth. That's why you're in trouble. Can't solve problems because you don't have any cure. But the people are taught self-righteousness so that they can feel and project that they're doing something good for God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad. And their babies are dying younger and younger on the streets. Their families are falling apart. IRS is taking everything they own and they're lying to their children talking about how safe they are. However, the world sees us for the hypocrites that we actually are. But we've polished that very well. And so we have this self-righteousness with us that blocks information. So when facts contradict our beliefs, we reject the facts and start re-examining our position to see maybe we're wrong, maybe stuff doesn't work for us because we're wrong. Oh, we can't be that because we're saved and nobody else is. Of course, the rest of the civilized world doesn't have time for that, so they continue to make progress, even in hard times while we um, suffer all the economic, social, political destruction that we suffer. Please write this down. Do this as a reference for research, ETC, because our purpose is to bring effect, not to feed your emotions. Are we clear? The Spanish Inquisition is the foundation of the entire modern world's politics, and every politician knows it, every reverend knows it, every shriner knows it, Every Master Mason knows it. Every member of Skull and Bones, Kaikos, Ku Klux Klan, Knights of Malta, Daughters of American Revolution, Daughters of ISIS. Why do they know it? Because they belong to the secret societies to get the truth that's held from the masses. And so they tell you it's devil worship so that you don't examine and recognize that the people who've been leading you is actually the vampires. So it's a very uncomfortable situation. 
Do you understand? Because the very people you've trusted have been pulling you into the pit. Standing behind a pulpit. And they don't even hide it. And they got a 501c3 Skull and Bones Agreement set up by Skull and Bones member Lyndon Baines Johnson after he knocked Kennedy off for trying to reinforce Article 1, Section 10 of the American Constitution bringing the Gold Act back in, which they have abrogated, which is the source of their economic problems. Um, I won't argue the fact that a lot of people keep claiming to do things for our people but won't bring these matters up, because these are the roots of your problem. And if you're not willing to deal with the root of your problem, don't consider that you're going to solve anything, because you're not going to solve anything until you be honest and deal with what's wrong, what happened to you. How did you get to where you are? The enforcement of the Spanish Inquisition is the secret treaty of Verona. Secret treaty of Verona. You can find that in your congressional records because most of the so-called leader guys are paid not to talk about this. They're paid to <coughs> present to you all uh, human beings are colors. And my light-skinned, orange-skinned, black uncle <coughs> is my Negro aunt. You know, um, that's incompetence. Human beings have nationalities all over the planet. Those are brand systems set up by Dutch masters to make such persons that accept them in law non-descendable. Write that down. Non-descendable. Which is the function mind you, of the brand system. Not that the Europeans were just being nasty guys, you know, they don't want to acknowledge black history. Well, black history is dead history. That's for Asiatics and Africans who fell, distinguished from civilized people who still honor their mothers and their fathers. You'll see, never see a civilized person come from Nigeria, Kibalan, any of the nation states talking about their light skinned, orange skinned black people. They will honor their mothers and fathers and be protected under international law like civilized beings are supposed to be. As soon as you see people walking around talking about black and white, they're entering the code system of the Christian black codes, which was set up in 1724 after they closed. Uh, no, that was adopted after uh, uh, James' speech for the Popes of Rome after they set up the enclave in Jamestown, Virginia, after they murdered Mataoka. Mataoka, you will know as Pocahontas. Mataoka was potentus. And for the Europeans to get a, str a stronghold in Morocco, uh, they competed. They had um, two men, John Rolfe and John Smith, competing for her affections. Uh, contrary to what they teach you in school, it was John Rolfe who married her. And um, they took her to Gravesand, England, and threw her overboard. Then they came back, because she had a son, they came back and they started the first aristocracy in Jamestown, Virginia. And her name was Mataoka, not Pocahontas. That's the beginning of the European hegemony on the North Gate. This is why persons in your secret societies in your highest degrees refer to themselves as the keepers of the North Gate. That's the cosmological name for Turtle Island, or what you know as North America, land of the Moors, the land of Nod. And everybody knows it but you. Do you understand? And when you think that your so-called black leaders don't have this information just because they don't talk about it, don't hold your breath because they do, but it doesn't generate finance. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. Liber, liberating people does not, you know, you can't get in their pockets too good. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because truth does not require finance. Neither does any broke gods. That's a game. And they've all been playing it on you. Take it or leave it, that's the fact. And our children know that we've been full of doo-doo. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why they don't trust us anymore. They love us, but at the same time, they know we're full of bars and mosques and synagogues, and none of them have done anything for the community except give some guy with a 501c3 skull and bones agreement a $3,000 suit and a $60 million airplane while the poverty, as soon as you step out of these beautiful buildings, is apparent everywhere. My interest is 
knowing that Rome has built a war machine and you have no remedy to the war machine. However, what you do have is an electrical activation of the pineal land, the seat of Delu, the seat of David, that you can reconnect with the electrical grid, what is known as the Akashic Records, with a pure heart. And in doing so, even the greatest army can't beat you. But you must be sincere. Wow. Because that's the only thing that you're going to do to beat Rome, because you're not going to beat Rome any other kind of way. Because they've poisoned the food. They've given most of you dead pledges, because most people don't know that mortgage means dead pledge. Contract is dead, and you're the pledge. That's what it means. And understand, those systems did not come in to force until 19 and 13, after Skull and Bones Woodrow Wilson sold the government to, under the secret treaty of Verona, that you have right there, to representatives of England for the Popes of Rome to sell what they had conquered. Finally, the last of the generations that had any inkling of consciousness of their bloodline. And they met on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. And under the secret treaty of Verona, all the Christian nations, representatives, agreed to not contradict each other. And they split up more of Europe estate. Keep in mind, 1884, 1885, with the Berlin Conference was that first major meeting of the Christian nations, don't, don't get caught up with no Jesus because Jesus wasn't Christian. He was Yahshua. He was Yahudi. Do you understand? Or what you call Jew. He was an Essene. And every secret society, they give a lesson of Ruth and Moabitus, his great-great-grandmother. But the reverends will never give that lesson to the people in the congregation while he himself has it. He himself refuse to enter in, but he hinders the little ones from entering in, and he gets kicked back from Rome, who the people think he's fighting against, but he really needs it for them. That's why they're doing so well, and you all, which concludes to me, don't so bad. How many of you know that the 1040 form comes under that secret treaty of Verona, and everything that you give, according to the entry, of the age of Aries, or what you call the season of Aries, to the east, that you call east star, stars now in the east, that 40% um, goes to the Queen of England, and the other 60% goes to the Popes of Rome. Not a penny goes to your children. How many people know that that's a tribute under the secret treaty of Rome? And how come your leader guys haven't told you all that? Why are you so poor? Why you're being drained? Why they don't want to discuss these things? Why they didn't want to say, well, we gotta make somebody like our complexion? Yeah. No, how about getting them out your pockets? Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, is that so hard? Mm -hmm. uh, secret Treaty of Verona. To enforce that Secret Treaty of Verona, they have what is known as the Doctrine of Discovery. Write that down. These are sequential. This is so that you can do some research for those, because you'll have many people who don't have interest in this information will try to tell you that that's devil talk. That's Illuminati. It's a devil. People get glassy eyed and maintain their own servitude. You should not fear knowledge, for the people are destroyed by the day, by the day for lack of it. After that, deal with um, the creation of the courts via the 14th Amendment of 1868 after they closed the Freedmen's Bureau, where they were supposed to nationalize you, give you back your names, your nationality, your religion, your history, and, and, and the U.S. corporation Pacific India Company, all the rest of them, which is really what the U.S. really is, was supposed to fund all of the people of the land because you didn't come from someplace else, you're home. And this is not India, and we ain't Indians. 40 acres and a mule, and a building, and support systems, etc. And logically, they weren't having that, that's why they bumped Lincoln off 
and they did the Emancipation Proclamation, which was a false document that transferred the Christian stock to the Congress of the United States Corporation and registered them as cattle property in the state of Delaware. They're all stock. Anybody called Negro, Black, or Colored, African, or they may call themselves this week, who are really of Moorish descent but deny their bloodline, um, are listed as Christian property. And don't think religion because it is politics. Do you understand? When people, when you go into the communities and people are talking about Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, they're thinking in their mind spirituality. Politicians know that that's not true. It's all politics, you all. Do you understand? Yeah. So when they're talking Muslim, Christian, they're talking politics, war, and economics. They're not talking some worship of God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, Yahweh. No, they're not. That's for the masses. They keep the masses busy and out of the hair of the rulers. That's why the masses keep losing. And after this 14th Amendment creation of the corpse, you have, say, um, the Buck Act. So write these down. These are research points for you. And also, Trading with the Enemy Act. All of these, including DHS, Department of Homeland Security, are all derivative of the Spanish Inquisition. Different names for different times, same policy. Are we clear? Knowing that these people are emotionally damaged, um, and we are. Um, Rahm Emanuel, um, so-called Jew, left the Obama administration, what was that, 2010, 2011, ran for um, mayor of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Geographically, Chicago's uh, sister city of Mecca. Um, Rahm Emanuel, Jew, one of the first things he issued from his desk was a proclamation telling the real history of the North Gate. You know, too many people weren't too happy about that. Because you got to remember, anybody in a position of power is a mason. That's number one. You know, and when you're looking at Skull and Bones, Knights Columbus, Knights Templar, the Vatican, all of it is masonry. Do you understand? Yes, masonry is mother and son. That means every man has a belly button. Every man came from a mother. To study the planet Earth, you must know the mother to know the son. Because even her sons were once herself, and they were all female eggs. So study of masonry is a study of the human condition on the planet Earth. It's ma, son, and the study of re, masonry. Masonry is essentially Islam, the science, not Islam, the creed. There's, there's two different distinctions. Do you understand? It deals with I, self, law, and master. It is man knowing himself. And it's ancient on the planet. It has nothing to do directly with Prophet Muhammad. Do you understand? He's the founder of the reuniting of Islam. Do you understand? So when you're talking about, say, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, they're all Masons and they all had Korans. Don't ever get it twisted. But they don't look at it the way the masses look at it. They look at it as a science book of Earth. Are we clear? And one thing about all your so-called leader guys, they got Korans, Waspi, Davidus, um, the Magian Law, um, Torah, Tanakh, Septuaginta, Book of the Dead, etc. And the priesthood knows that different books were for different lords of the days. But for the masses, they get one book and tell them that's for the Lord. And they're divided against each other, and they cut each other's throats in the name of love. My God is better than your God. He wears better sneaks than yours, God. And they start killing each other and talk about love. Biggest hypocrite the world has ever known. As soon as somebody comes talk about they, they're believers, duck. Because they're getting ready to hit you with a left. And they really get mad at you if you don't give Reverend Jones five dollars when Jesus is half that he's going to take Susie to the Bahamas with. And he always does it. But, you know, some adults have the mentality of children. But thankfully, according to divine laws of nature, the generations that are coming up now are not buying into it. 
even though they love us, they're not buying into it. What we have to do is so that they don't get corrupted is just give them some truth to work with. Right. Because if you don't give them some direct truth, it will go into a negative. And that's not good at all. Now, um, keep in mind, um, a lot of your middle class Europeans um, now, as you all know, have started a lot of sovereignty groups. Yeah. And the reason they have started these sovereignty groups is, first of all, keep in mind that they have been falsely claiming to be Americans. They are not. We are the Americans. All right? Um, do you have, um, let me see, you don't have that 1826 Webster's? Um, how many of, how many, who in here did not know of their Moorish bloodline? You didn't know of your Moorish bloodline? All right, you didn't? All right, now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something very simple, and I'm going to give you all a third grade grammar degree. It's called third grade etymon degree. Write that down, etymon. E T Y M O N. You know when the Europeans make fun of our people? And, and, and uh, don't get sensitive because we're just dealing with facts. You understand? And also why other people from other nation states, including from Africa, have very little respect for black people. And you wonder why they always stop at the hardware store and get a thick piece of plexiglass and last over two years. They can get wealthy because they're the only people that give up their birthright. And always swear they know Jesus and nobody else does. They make the world wealthy. Don't be insulted. You must understand the position that we place other people in. Because it is we who went out of a job two months, or we go into the army for Rome, go to and fro the earth devouring nations to keep Rome in power, then come back and start some nigger group marching and praying about some rights that ain't going to happen. That's why nobody likes black people. Black is a brand for people of Moorish Canaanite descent who fell to the lowest depths of civilization. That's how you can tell them from other civilized people. And you know how they say, concerning our people, with all their self-righteousness, right? We're really self-righteous. We got this self-righteous attitude. You know, Jesus made us and nobody else type thing. That's how we roll. And then when somebody says something contrary, we come out of coop, because we can box too. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows it. <laughs> you know how they say, don't worry about them. Their children will never compete because they can't read. And the ones who can, won't. And the ones who know, won't tell. Because we give them a 501c3. And they're told it came from Jesus for the word. Etiman is the word. First there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Word is the primal issue in that statement. I'm going to give you a third grade, Eddie Mind degree. Consider this with our babies. Consider this with your babies to save your babies. Because culture is in the language. Doubt that not. I want you to go into the word black. Now most of the people of Canaanite Moabite descent have been trained over the generations to call themselves black. It was a, maybe four or five generations ago, if you called them black, you had a fight. For some of them had a little bit of knowledge that their birthright was being stolen. A couple more generations and they lost contact. Now they think it's some kind of nation state. Yeah, because my teacher said black Adonia in Africa and Negro Dina in color Defia <laughs> doesn't exist in any map on any land on this planet. <laughs> now, this is fundamental, right? So keep this in mind, teachers to the children, right? Because remember what the General Education Board set up by Rockefeller uh, in 1902, it's called the General Education Board, write that down, 
the structure and design was to make the people docile. Are we clear? So anyone who thinks that they're going to get an education in these schools controlled by Rome, don't hold your breath. If you don't have mother wit, you ain't making it. Get it? Huh? Those are only political keys to open doors. That's it. They're not education. Are we clear? Are we clear? Now, I want you to read black. And I'm going to, can you stand up so that, so that the audience can, can share with us and share your name now? Sister Dara. Dara? Sister Dara is the instructor. Consider not only the bodies that are sitting here, but the eggs in the womb, because they hear you too. So before they come here, you must teach them. Now, I'm going to show you, very basically, how most of us have, have been miseducated, quite easily, mm -hmm. right? By letting, rather than convince you, or to try to convince you, I'll have you read it, mm -hmm. all right? So now, she's going to a dictionary, she's going to read black to all the adults and the children who must compete in this world. Black, blacker, blackest. Abbreviation, I guess, that stands for. Mm -hmm. BL, BLK. Mm -hmm. Number one, being of the darkest achromatic visual value. Now, stop. Down. Now, a scholar would automatically recognize the flaw. Mm -hmm. A grammatic, a, 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 a one um, who understands orthology mm -hmm. would immediately recognize that she violated. Mm -hmm. But I know it's because of the training, mm -hmm. right? Now I want you to do it again. Speak louder okay. in the camera, because remember that you're making history. Right. All right, go ahead. Black. Adjective. Now you're talking. First rule in linguistics, this is all around the world is that you must place the word in its proper matrix, which means womb, or part of speech. It's mother. It's etymon. When you violate that rule, you're already considered either uneducated or incompetent, combination of the two. One of the things that our people always do is that they go past the matrix. And not knowing that connotative linguistics, write this down, connotative linguistics was introduced by the order of the bishopric to dumb people down. Hmm. Are we clear? Hmm. Distinguished from that which is proper, which is denotative linguistics. Denotative. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So we have opposing forces in linguistic dispensation. All right? This is why automatically, almost automatically, she went past the part of speech. Mm -hmm. So third grade, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a third grader here, and we have a third grader, and we say, well, little sis, um, what's an adjective? And the child will say, hmm, an adjective is a modifier. It modifies, and it can be used to modify a noun. However, it can never be a noun. It is not a person, place, thing, or idea. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if it's applied to humans, it's for some social engineering purpose, apparently without going any further. That's the distinction between people who can read and people who can not read. They ignore the matrix and therefore immediately go into the linear entries without question and can't distinguish the wheat from the chaff. Do not know the connotative linguistics from the denotative linguistics. And it will immediately start casting a spell. Read. Black. Adjective, blacker, blackest, abbreviation, BL, BLK. Number one, being of the darkest arachromatic visual value, producing or reflecting comparatively little light and having no dominant, predominant hue. Number two, having no light whatsoever. A black cave, belonging to an ethnic group 
having dark skin, especially negroid. Four, dark in color or having parts that are dark in color. Used with animals and plant names. Black bass, black bitch, black perch. <laughs> <laughs> So the maps don't know the language is used to cast spells. Continue to read and watch them cast the spell. Soil, as from soot, evil, sinister, black deeds, cheerless and depressing, gloomy, angered, sullen, sometimes capital, attended with disaster, calamitous, the stock market, crash on black. All right, you don't need to go any that. further. Mm. <laughs> when you accept it, you accepted the spell of the dark priesthood who created connotative linguistics. But they needed you to believe. So they bought off what you call Pharisees and Sadducees, warriors mm. and priests, mm. for a few pieces of, of um, yeah. coins called the Bible 1C3. And their job is to keep that black thing going, making you think it means Afrocentricity. Mm. 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 For the time, for the sake of time, right? Um, when you get a decent dictionary, it would have what you call morphology, or how words are transferred. When you go down, I'm gonna cut through the chase. When you go down, you would go to the etymon, and the etymology would be what you call the square brackets. And it will have M-E, which means Middle English. Do you understand? These are things that you look for as a standard. Pay attention to this, baby, because this is how you're gonna read, all right? Right. All right? Always look for the square brackets, and that's called the etymology. And then look at the letters, and it'll say M-E. Now for the children, so, so you can properly read, go to the appendix and you put a timeline on it. Mm. Are we clear? All scholars are trained to do that. And you will find that it's 1100 to 15. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So now, if some scholar comes and tells your baby, the ancient black gods of Egypt, you know they're lying. Wow. And you'll yeah. save your babies. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that, you buy into it and take on the spell, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. the word does not go past 1100 on the planet called Earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between people who can read and people who cannot. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. We won't go any further, but I want you to go just beneath that. And I want you to recognize what you see as the word morphs. And remember as we talked, right? That's a compound word. And for the little baby, well, she's our baby anyway. What is a compound word? Now, children don't have an agenda, so they'll usually tell the truth. Thank you. So it's two more words put together. See, she ain't worried about somebody firing. <laughs> All right, read what you see. Let's in the dictionary. Understand. Go ahead. Continue. Black or more? More. All right, read. Noun. Noun. So that means the person placed in her idea, right? All right, now continue to read. Any dark skinned person especially an African Negro, earlier black more. And then they separate the black, don't they? Yeah. And it's all an even case, isn't it? That's correct. And more is capitalized, isn't it? Correct. Grammatical corruption. So which one is the identity of these people who think they're black and Negroes? Is it in the dictionary? Yeah. Why is it an issue with these people that continue to claim to be somebody that they're not before the civilized world get rejected and accuse the civilized world of racism when race is the human species, which means they not only can't read, they don't even know what things mean. Mm -hmm. So in the world, they're called wards of the state or totally incompetent and are rejected. Are we clear? Yes. Because you must honor your mothers and fathers that your days are recognized by the rest of the nations to be longer or lengthened on the planet Earth, even to be dissembled.
Dred Scott case, most important court of the slave case ever come before the Supreme Court of the United States. Come to some court talking about freedom and liberty, claim to be Dred Scott. He's of Asiatic African descent. Can't happen. Plaintiff in error. Scholars keep talking racism. Plaintiff in error. Point is that we must start taking responsibility. And while the European has done much injury to our people, we have a responsibility to the honor of our mothers and fathers also. Are we clear? <laughs> so it's in the dictionary, isn't it? And it says earlier mm -hmm. form of more. So now we're out to lunch, you see? <laughs> now, the point that I'm making to you, and what I want you to go to a dictionary, mm. is to show you that it doesn't take a lot of research. This is not deep. Mm -hmm. It's elementary. Mm. And yet, it's debated. And there is no debate. Now you understand why they murdered Malcolm when he found out? Hmm. Yeah. A lot of cult members already knew this stuff. Yeah. It's like you seen Elijah Muhammad with his feds on earlier. It was an addict. Brother Khalid, as soon as he started telling these people they're moors, all of a sudden he had a seizure in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Let's go and tell pro operations. Mm -hmm. Because you are the heirs to the world's largest estate and don't know it. This is what your black leaders ain't telling you. You're not the poorest people, you're the richest people. You've just been under European colonial operations and you forgot your bloodline. That's what's called the great Masonic secret, you. That's why they tell you it's the devil, so you don't examine it. <laughs> it's true. And the world has been living off of you. And so everybody's a little bit uncomfortable when you start getting this information. That's why they start saying, that's terrorist papers. How can the truth be terrorist papers? Do you understand? Now, I wanted you to see that. And understand anyone who can go uh, to the dictionary, and any one of you who go to Ronald Hill's classes already know this. But this is to put everybody on the same page to give you some comprehension. Why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? One of the things that many of the people don't understand they look at this information as uh, some kind of Islamic group or cult thing that's mm, choice of you being interested in or not type mm -hmm. thing. This is your bloodline. This is your inherited right. And every one of your leaders have this information. How many people know that the rest of the civilized world with their um, special committee of 24 for decolonization has charged all the churches and civic groups to dispense this information that I'm talking to you right now. How many of you are aware of that? Hmm. It's called the rights of indigenous people. That's world governments have come together for you all to declare your nationality. And yet it is not being distributed in your neighborhood, but yeah, everybody's come here talking black stuff. That keeps you in the dead state of the economic suppression and the poisonous foods and everything else that they're dealing on you from the Spanish Inquisition. Because the people are not aware of what's really going on. Ignorance is dangerous. I want to share with you, which many of you are already aware of, I want to share with you, um, say, Georgie's, Georgie's letter as an example to, to um, show you what is known um, Now, because you raised your hand too, I want you to read along with this as soon as I get this together. I want you to look at George Washington's letter. Right here, turn this page back while this is going on. Now, keep in mind, um, and this is particularly for the baby, I'm glad that you brought the baby here. It should be more. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't get it to them, they're going to be subject to a lot of things that are not good. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Do not promote, do not promote that generation gap crap. They are your future. Now, I'm going to share with you what this is, is going, what you're looking at yourself. Yeah. Now keep in mind that all your leader guys got this 
all your matrons, whenever you see the matron of the church, or the mosque, matron, mm -hmm. yes, they're all Eastern stars. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. And the reverends are masons, even though they condemn it across the pulpit. In secret, they're masons, all of them are. Mm -hmm. And in secret, got a fez, too. Mm -hmm. Dressed with jewels that might cost more in your house. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So don't ever get the idea that these people don't know. Mm -hmm. They couldn't possibly know. <laughs> they don't talk about these things. Yeah, because um, those few pieces of silver won't be coming in, even though they don't give them silver anymore. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You get me for you. It's all the same, though. Um, oh, for the moment, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Georgie's letter. But just for the moment, I'm going to take you to... Um, um, King Alfred II military document called King Alfred. These are exotic maps, including concentration camps. King Alfred plan? King Alfred plan, Rex 84. Um, now I'm going to bump this up, and I'm going to try to make it readable to you. And I'm going to show you what everybody already knows, clear this up if you see it's necessary. Understand, um, at the top, these are all these organizations that have been infiltrated. Are we clear? So I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to cut through the chase since we're talking about this. <clears throat> Note at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. Because these people ain't going to have any jobs. They ain't going to be closing Walmarts and a whole bunch of other stuff. Exactly. They ain't talking about the tunnels they've got on their own. Working with local police officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled lists of minority leaders have been read at the National Data Com Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal. This is what you all never suspected about your leader guys. And we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal King Alfred in all his aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. Now I want you to pay uh, particular attention to this next paragraph because it's very revealing. But keep in mind, this is a top secret document. It was not meant for public dispensation. As a matter of fact, it was drafted, um, drawn off of computers that they were selling at Arizona, you know, when they sell the government equipment. Oh. And the guy who pulled this off, because actually it was European, <laughs> solitary confinement. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Attorney General, pay close attention to this, and keep in mind that everybody knows this, so don't you ever doubt it. The same way you went into this dictionary? Mm -hmm. All right. Preliminary memo of Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. I repeat. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent mm. by heritage mm. and knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of minority is the Deep South, the Eastern Seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the West Coast. See what all your leaders know? Mm. They got these people thinking that the European brought them on ships. Mm. Mm. You are indigenous and aboriginal to the land, wow. to the continent. Wow. Mm. Not the country, the continent. Mm. And they got you thinking that that's the only Africa. Mm. Mm. See why other Africans don't respect black people? Mm. 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 And you, it confuses you when they come in your community, mm. but they move in other communities, mm. and they stop at the hardware store, get a thick piece of plexiglass, and they'll deal with you, 
And after dark, they leave the zoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And after a couple years, they'll sell up the business to another nationality, and they come and suck off of you. Mm -hmm. And then you, being trained by your sellout black leaders, come out and say they don't like the black man's color. Mm -hmm. Color mm -hmm. is a legal status. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with complexion. Mm -hmm. Now, many of you who have had the opportunity to study with Ramayil, uh, we want to make available to you over 3,000 note value in books on flash drive so that you can do your own study. Do you understand? Yeah. Just bring your flash drive and we'll make sure that you have it because you're going to need it. Wow. Are we clear? Yeah. Yes. Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary of Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence from 1 to 7. Bouvier's Money Mechanics and multiple other information will keep you busy for over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. We're not here to make you followers. We're here to liberate you. Yeah. But you must take the responsibility of the honor of your mothers and fathers. This is the age of Aquarius, the age that you yourself must place your hand in Allah's hand, not with some idol god systems, mm -hmm. and honor your mothers and fathers. To follow no one, that's for the Piscean age, which is dead. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And so the dark priests are kind of upset because they're being displaced. Mm -hmm. What will displace them is once you know yourself. Yeah. Man, no, no, know no, thyself. No, 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 no. I'm going to share with you. This is um, this is electronics. This is how they're using to um, to actually govern you. That or not, currency is not money. Is dealing with the electrical systems of humanity and the movement of energy. You're considered batteries, mm. and the vampires are draining you. Mm. Are we clear? <laughs> now, Now this is um this will be dealing with uh, what you're reading now. Okay. All right. Um, it'll, it'll take a minute to look up because it's a lot of graphics. In it. This is before the Great Earthquake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, um, for the baby. Just to let you know, before we go to the letter, these here are your preters, or what you know as presidents, prior to George Washington. Are we clear? All persons in secret societies get this information. They pay thousands of dollars for these degrees and take death oaths to Rome not to reveal the secrets. Mm -hmm. It's why the masses are behind the curve no matter how educated they are because they really don't know what's up. Are we clear? Um, Arthur St. Clair, Arthur St. This is, this is from the um, Continental Congress. Are we clear? Arthur St. Clair was when the uh, treaty was made. This is what Obama went to. He cooked the, what you call Egypt. He cooked the proper name of Egypt. When he exposed to the representatives of nations that the American Constitution is derived from Muslim law, and then Michelle broke tradition and went to the Alhambra, the last stronghold of the Moors, before the Pontifex of 1492. Then they came back together. That's when they took the pictures of them coming through the double doors with the Moorish flag to the left. And then they signed the rights of indigenous people. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, that's for you to declare your nationality. Because until you're heritable, you have no power mm -hmm. to enforce the common law. Because mm -hmm. the common law trumps the Roman law, the, uh, the canon law, and the civil law, i.e., the ends legis, or the 14th Amendment courts, including the birth certificates, which are bottom re instruments, and the marriage certificates, they're all bottom re instruments, they're on the stock market. Mm -hmm. 
you understand? The only way you can trump that is the honor of your mothers and fathers, and you must be an appropriate persona su juris. You must be yourself. If you're not, you're automatically a state ward and have no de descendability. This is why they maintain the brand system. This is why they play black leaders keep promoting that black thing because they know that they won't get their few pieces of silver because once you understand your bloodline and you start speaking openly, them T-bonds will start dying around the world. And any nation state that got them, them T-bonds will curl up. Do you understand? Because that is a trust that they created with the courts of the 14th Amendment. That's why they give the 14th Amendment the quality of person, ETC. Um, so, and most people aren't aware that they're on the stock on the stock market. So let me go here, and then we'll see here. Richard Henry Lee. Now John Hanson. John Hanson was the first uh, president of the United States Republic. He was Moorish. Yeah. And they made the seal for him. That's what you see, the Great Seal. And they tried that to no make one him speaks under now. except him. Yeah. He's the only one that spoke under that Great Seal. John Hanson, that you see on the first. S O N. John Hanson, right here. That's the first president of the United States. These are successive Richard Henry Lee, second, Elias Boonot, third, John, uh, Thomas Mifflin, the fourth, John Hancock, the fifth, Nathaniel Gorham, the sixth, Arthur St. Clair, the seventh. That's when the Treaty of Peace and Friendship was drafted that Obama was talking about when he went to Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli. And this is why the Europeans sing their song from the halls of Montezuma to the, to the shores of Tripoli, because they conquered the Moorish Empire, hmm. which is you. That's what you're enslaved to. That's the real history, not what you're told in them school books. Are we clear? And uh, Cyrus Griffin, and he was the eighth, and George Washington was a general in the army. And uh, Chief Justice uh, Muali, uh, spoke with them to assign George in Benjamin Franklin's place, which he was to be actually after the treaty. Um, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson successively were to be treat, uh, treaters after the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that Obama spoke about. And they were assigned, but um, Benjamin Franklin was in England, etc., and he was absent during the signing. And it was suggested by Mu Ali that George Washington take the first seat. Mu Ali, you know, as Benjamin Banneker. Do you understand? Chief Justice Mu Ali. Now, deal. This is the real history. This is what would only be given in Masonic orders or secret societies, and you would pay thousands of dollars for this information, and you would take a death oath not to reveal it to others. Why? Because once people know mind faith. And if the people are made unblind, the institutions will collapse. Are we clear? And of course, they won't uh, continue to be poor either. Interesting. Anyway, so let's go to the, to the letter. Right? So, and this is for, um, this is, now they are, that minister's plenty potentiary, how many people are wearing that title? Minister's plenty potentiary. Their consular titles. How come they never mention that when they talk about the so-called founding fathers? Mm -hmm. Because you'd know where the, the title potentate comes in in masonry, mm -hmm. and you, you kind of start putting stuff together, mm -hmm. and you start recognizing somebody's playing y'all. Mm -hmm. Of course they are, but it's different when you figure it out because then that blind faith dies, and then they can't suck you. See, vampires need a clear straw. <laughs> <laughs> Now, and this is for people who have not been aware of why all your leaders are Masons. Do you understand? So don't get spooked up about it. Understand what real history is, not what you've been told. You know, don't get uncomfortable, get weak. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Great and magnanimous friend, since the date of the letter which the late Congress, you already telling me first sentence that he wasn't the first president, you see? Mm -hmm. But the masses already have been trained like little rats to think that George E. Washington was the first president 
So you can see our people are already out of sequence. Mm -hmm. They're already not even in harmony with real world history. So automatically, economically and politically, they're automatically handicapped mm -hmm. by design with the help of their leader guys mm. who keep hiding this information. Because they, they say emotional black things and everybody gets ex ups, uh, you know, excited like a spirituality or something. No, they're called overseeing, mm. playing on your emotions. So, since the date of letter which the late Congress by their president addressed your Imperial Majesty, the United States of America have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the Constitution of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy. The time necessarily employed in the arduous task and the disarrangements occasioned by so great though peaceable revolution will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regularly advised marks of attention from the United States which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct toward them afforded reason to expect. The United States having unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority, so you see he was appointed, he was not elected. Mm -hmm. In this nation, your majesty's letter of August the 17th, 1788, two years before his appointment, mm. which by reason of the dissolution of the late government that they told you didn't exist, mm. remain unanswered has been delivered to me. I've also received the letters which your imperial majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashaws of Tunis and Tripoli, see what Obama was talking about? Mm -hmm. And I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and thanks of the United States for this important mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies toward this nation who have never entered them is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. They couldn't keep up with taxes. Mm -hmm. Within our territories there are no mines, whether gold or silver, and this young nation, just recovering from the waste and dissolution of a long war, excuse me, have not yet, as yet, had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce, but our soil is bountiful and our people industrious, and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. The encouragement with which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce, listen to this, the encouragement with which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions, what do you think you're standing, y'all? Now you understand the Masonic secret? Now do you understand the Mummer's Parade in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. That's in your face. Now you understand why they did the movie with Nicholas Cage, National Treasury with the Great Seal in Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. You need to understand they're talking to you. Plus they're testing to see how awake you are or how good their overseers have kept you asleep so that they can administer government and world policy in your name at your expense and at your detriment. Anyway, so encouragement with which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions, the punctuality with which you have caused the treaty with us to be observed, and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for and attachment to your imperial majesty. That's the founding of this nation. How come these people don't know they're standing on Morocco? Yeah. How come these people of Moorish descent keep thinking that they're black? Mm -hmm. And light-skinned, orange-skinned, green people? Mm -hmm. And don't matter what color you are. And don't even know they're standing on their own land. That's why they won't deport us. They keep building jails because they can't deport you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsists between your empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of giving, or, or pardon me, of convincing your majesty of the high sense which in common with the whole nation I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your imperial majesty. May the Almighty bless your Imperial Majesty 
our great and magnanimous friend with his constant guidance and protection signed George Washington. How come the children don't get this in school? You can kind of figure that out. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786-1787, and as you all know, as you learned in school, the American Constitution was adopted in 1788, ratified 1789, now you can understand the letter. You can also understand why you're being so mistreated, because you're actually the nobles who have been overthrown. Do you understand? That's why they burned books, to disconnect you. Are we clear? That's why other Asiatics and Africans who come from other countries are not allowed to talk to you on these degrees. Are we clear? It's also why they're encouraged not to move in your communities. Because you might break out and find some relationship and start talking real history. And then, of course, uh, once you understand that you've been played by your, that, that these um, houses that they call gods on the other, every other corner are actually spy centers. Mm. Mm. And you've been funding them, too. Mm. Mm. And you never suspected them. Mm. Plus, the priest has been raising grape in your children. Mm. Mm. Protected by the Pope. Mm. And you all keep on believing these uh, guys that claim to love Jesus. No, Jay and Ebri. Mm. The one they called Jesus' name was Yahshua ben Yosef. This is just to give you an insight on the real politics so that you can understand why we're giving you this information. Because until you know real history, you will be totally disconnected from anything concerning your economic salvation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're marching and praying and protesting and thinking that you're going to fix stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's a called a social political treadmill mm -hmm. and you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Until the honor of your mothers and fathers is restored with you, not because we say so. You have no honor. You are not descendable. You'll never develop what's called old money. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah. Now, look at this preamble to that um, const uh, to this uh, treaty that supersedes the Constitution, as you can see. Now you understand what Obama was talking about. <laughs> you see? But most people, when Obama was speaking, that went over their head. And you know most of our people say in those communities, Obama ain't that did not for black man. He's trying to get them to stop being black. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right right on their head. Do you understand? Yeah. To all persons to whom these presents shall come or be made known, whereas the United States of America in Congress assembled by their commission, being a bearing date, the 12th day of 1000, May 1784, thought proper to constitute John Adams. Y'all familiar with them? Benjamin Franklin, you're familiar with him? Yeah. And Thomas Jefferson, y'all familiar with him? Mm -hmm. Their ministers playing potentiary. You familiar with that title? No. Given to them, or majority of them, full power to confer, treat, and negotiate with the ambassador, minister, or commissioner of His Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco, concerning a treaty of amity and commerce. That stars and stripes is the amity and commerce flag. It is not the national flag. See how sleep the people are? So anyway, minister or commissioner of His Majesty and Emperor, the Emperor of Morocco concerning a treaty of amity and commerce to make and receive propositions for such treaty and to conclude and sign the same transmitting to the United States in Congress assembled for their final ratification. And by one other commission bearing date the 11th day of March 1785 did further empower the said ministers plenipotentiary or a majority of them by writing under the hands and seals to appoint such agent in the said business as they might think proper with authority under the direction and instruction of the said ministers to commence and prosecute the said negotiations and conferences for the said treaty, provided that the said treaty shall be signed, should be signed by the ministers, and whereas we, the said John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson, two of the said ministers plenipotentiary, the said Bank Benjamin Franklin being absent by writing under the hand and seal, of the said John Adams at London, October 5th, 1785, 
and of the said Thomas Jefferson at Paris, October the 11th of the same year, did appoint Thomas Barclay agent in the business aforesaid, giving him the powers therein, which by the said second commission, we, Barclay, in pursuance thereof, both arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and His Majesty the Emperor of Morocco, and sealed with his royal seal, being translated into the language of said United States of America, uh, uh, together with the attestations thereto annexed, are in the following words to wit, in the name of Almighty God, this is a treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the United States of America, which is confirmed and which we have ordered to be written in the book and sealed with our royal seal mm. at our court of Morocco in the 25th day of the blessed month of Shaban in the year 1200, trusting in God, it will remain permanent. And there's your national flag, your great Masonic secret. Are we clear? Yeah. And so as you can see, the United States Corporation Company is an appendage of the Moroccan Empire. And you are the descendants of those Moors. <laughs> now you understand why you're so mistreated? Because they have overthrown you and put you in servitude, connotatively referred to as slavery. So it was necessary for them to create an artificial person. That's what the 14th Amendment is. That's why these people can't even vote with those names that don't belong to them, because they're listed as cattle. Wow. Are we clear? Mm. So every second or third president has to even sign <coughs> after the, the council at Rome votes whether they want these animals to use their names to vote. So don't be insulted. This is what it is. <laughs> So, why is no one addressing these things? Because they want to allow these people to have their dignity in their, in their servitude? There's nothing dignified about that, transacting business in another man's name and wonder why you can't own anything. And why all the eggs in the womb are already declared wards of the state before even born. And then they want to sit and, and pontificate to these children about praying to Allah, Jesus, Moses, and Muhammad. And these people are in servitude to Rome, the same Romans that murdered all the prophets. Mm. 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 Who does that to them? Their parents. They want to tell you about gods that they haven't seen, but they don't even know the history of the planet that they domiciled upon. Mm. And the world has no respect for such persons who are referred to as traitors and hypocrites. And nobody likes black people. That's why, because everybody knows your history. But you. <laughs> now, um, for those of you, how many of you heard that speech that Obama made when he went to, um, when he spoke before the, uh, the General Assemblies, and um, he talked about um, Article 11. I want you to, I want you to see what Obama. Read and, and for those who may not know, just punch on the computer. Say, what does Obama have to say about the Moors? And he'll go immediately to Article 11, but he'll go into the middle because he knows that our people are biased against themselves. They hate themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he ain't going to tell them the first line, but he knows that so many of the people are looking to criticize him that once they do the research, they'll see where the message that we've sent. Article 11. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims, that's where you get Muslim from, and as the said states never have entered into any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. Now you understand George Washington's letter? In other words, they were sanctioned to do business at Morocco. That's what the Constitution is. It's a covenant. Mm. Are we clear? Mm. And this is why when you look at Article 6 of the American Constitution, it says all debts and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be binding against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. 
And all treaties made or which shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. And any laws or constitution of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. <coughs> and our people don't even read the Constitution because they don't know themselves. They don't even relate it to being themselves because they don't know. And their leader guys ain't telling them. Do you understand? So I'm giving you documents to show you that what you thought you know is not what's really going on. And so that when we critique some of the things politically, and some of your so-called paid off black leaders understand it's not personal. If you love your family and your children, you will tell them the truth. And you will understand why you're poor. You'll understand why you're catching hell. You can live in a false life. You're plugged into a false matrix. And you've been living a false life. And people have been making, generating finance at your expense while you're doing it. Talking about black love and stuff. Yeah, where the second constitution comes from. See, with the constitution, they have to honor the treaty. Which means they have to liberate you. They have created this whole paradigm that um, you were come from someplace else, which is a lie. Then they start claiming to be Americans, which they are not. Then you start agreeing that they're Americans, which gives up your birthright, mm. which makes you wars. Mm. Then mentally thinking that you came from someplace else that disconnects you from the land. Mm. And this ain't India. Mm. Do, you, do you understand? Once they got you to agree to those brands, you gave up your birthright. And law is called incompetence. Are we clear? Sure. Any incompetent person is declared not descendable. In law, as soon as you start talking about you black, in color. In law, you're automatically not descendable. By most of people not knowing law, they don't know that. Are we clear? Immediately they will put a representative knight from the barristers of England on you, whose name most likely they're carrying anyway. This is where they always put lawyers on, black people. Because they can't present themselves, therefore they must be really working. Do you understand? Now, with the coup of 1871, they secretly converted the Republic, Article 4, Section 4 guarantees a Republican form of government for every state in the Union as a requirement. They set up a demon system to enforce the secret treaty of Verona and the doctrine of discovery. That demon system is called democracy, order of the Bishop of Rome, set up secretly in 18 and 71. That's your second constitution because the constitution binds them. You see? That's why it's important for you to know your real history. Because if you're not your proper person, you can't even argue this in law. Do you understand? So, 1781, there was a coup. Now, as we were talking earlier, and I'm with you, I, I, you know, Romney was always working with his hard working brother, and I also uh, respect him. And he's got a good woman behind every good man, a good woman. Stand up, please. That's his good woman. <laughs> we were talking earlier, and one of the things, because we discussed a lot of the details on the con consciousness of our people, knowing that. Until you are what you call ethereally connected to your bloodline, it's only data to you. This is another reason why they're making the effort to try to get this information to you on a more personal concept. With documents, because people don't know how to separate beliefs from facts. Because we've been trained for generations to think that beliefs are right. No, beliefs are for children, imbeciles, and rabbits. They are. Faith is for teenagers, and fruition is for adults. Most of the masses never even heard of fruition. All rabbis know it, all master masons know it, all grand sheiks and sheikesses know it, all matrons know it, all eastern stars know it. How come the bill payers that they call believers don't know it? Because they are the bill payers. And they ain't figured it out yet. And they raped them without conscience. 
Because every man, woman, and child must confess their own and worship under their own vine and tree tree. And since those persons called black refuse to honor their mothers and fathers, the rest of the world don't feel guilty abusing you. Because the Chinese will never come here talking about he's a light-skinned yellow guy and give up his birthright like some other lunchbox people that think human beings are crayons. There's a symbol of three candlesticks. And they would usually, when an ancient he cooked up, and in the Yucatan too, same principle across the world. So don't get this, don't get this twisted. Don't think that the ancient mystery school is just in he cooked up on that side. Also in the Yucatan, many of them older. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. The largest pyramid in the world was in Mexico City. The great complex of Old Mech was there. Old Amexum. You're in and on Africa, and everybody knows it but y'all. You've been protected, not to the good, but to the benefit of those who've been ruling. This stuff is not hard to know, even though the Christians burned many books for over 300 years, they still couldn't crush the history. They hid much of it, but they couldn't crush it. And all of your secret societies preserve your history and call it devil worship to keep you from ever examining it. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. this, so when they talk about the Treaty of Morocco between Morocco and the United States, what in Morocco are they talking about and where did they do this treaty? Now see what you just said? That's why I'm showing you the letter so you can understand you're standing on Morocco. Uh, That's the kingdom. This is the sure. empire. This is the yeah. empire. That's what I thought. This is, now you all take out a note. <coughs> a single note, what you call a dollar bill. It's not a dollar. Take out a single note. Huh? No, 56. That's when they release that side. They're supposed to release this side. Share, share with each other a, a note because I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you how things are, are, are in your face. You know how they say the best way to hide things from people? <laughs> that, that's why I got a five. Now, I want you to look at it. I'll give you a chance for that. Now, look on the back. Look on the back of the seal. Right? And you have two seals, don't you? Yep. Right? Look on the back. Now, someone read under the first seal. What does it say at the very bottom underneath the seal? Under the first seal. Say it out loud. The Great Seal. Now, again, we're thinking third grade grammatication, right? Read what's under the second seal. So, for a third grader, what part of speech is the word of? Preposition. preposition. A preposition is what? A substantive connector, which means those two seals are one. And as a matter of fact, they write it on there, O and E, right in your face. So how many of you know that the United States has a dual seal? But yet you handle this every day. Now, if you'll notice, under the flying bird, right, you'll see the President, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Treasury, all the politicians speak under the flying bird. How come none of them speak under the Great Seal, which is apparently clearly there? That's the Great Seal. How come nobody speaks under it? Because the heirs are to be kept asleep. Now, if you'll notice over the bird's head, you'll see Hex Alpha. <coughs> with 13 stars. Hex Alpha is the insignia of the ancient Canaanite Moabite nation. They sometimes call us Yahudi because we crossed the river. It's not a religion, it's what we did. Before the great earthquake, when you saw that demonstration of the Mapamunde, when you saw all the land together, when we crossed the river under the great super Devir of the ancient world on this side, we were called Yahudi, those who cross 
no river. Falsely, we call Jews. Or Hebrew, those who cross the river. It's not a religion. Do you understand? It's the dividing of the land between Ham and Cush. Do you understand? And so, like, I'm Anayawiya, or what you would call Cherokee. And many of you, some of you may be from Cherokees, native tribal areas in the south. And some of you may be Nanako, that's more like the Delaware, Lower Jersey area. All right, and then my grandma then was Blackfoot, right? But those are names made up by Europeans. Do you understand? We're Moors, I'm Anya Nguyen people of the land, and we're not Indians either, and this is not India. <laughs> Remember, how did we become called Indians? When the Romans tried to take over the trade routes of the Moors, on Calpin, Tariq had an army, and we had a fort there for close to a thousand years. That's called Gibra Atariq, the mountain of Tariq. Some people say the Rock of Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to go around the Cape. Now, Pedro or more, do some research in your European schools because you ain't going to get it here. <coughs> you got to deal with people outside of this, these shores. Pedro or <laughs> more, navigated the Nino for Colombo, Christopher Colombo, etc., dealing with taking brothers and sisters from the islands actually to England, not actually reverse. They got people then they went to Africa on that side and brought people over here. No, they were taking them from here over there. Mm. And they pretty much wiped out um um Boricain. Boricain you refer to as Puerto Rico. Mm. Mm. And so they had to take the families from uh, surrounding islands to repopulate. And so when you see some of your other brothers and sisters of different complexions, don't get it twisted. They're Moors. That's your family. Do you understand? Same thing with the Philippines. They're mortals. You've got to understand the operations of European colonial operations on the planet is the defeat of the Moors, which is you. That's what your treatment, mistreatment is all about. You've got to know the real history so that you can have a mental concept on how to overcome this for the coming generations. You cannot overcome this with false information. Do you understand? Your false information gives them what is called mandate. As long as you don't deal with the truth, it gives them mandate. Are we clear? All right. So, understanding that every person in position of authority and power is given degrees of this knowledge in masonry, uh, like, to, like you'll see in, uh, say, maybe the last 50 years or so, in some of the orders, they started the story about Hiram Abiff, the great architect. Mm -hmm. And you're buried in the dark, dark north. And then they'll have um, the, um, that mosque in Philadelphia, which is City Hall. If you look at his design, it's like a mosque. Four gates, the parapet on the north, and they got Willie Penn standing 23.5 degrees, facing east by northeast to the Masonic Lodge, 1 North Broad Street. And that's where they stopped the, the Masonic Parade. And the cornerstone is not outside, it's in a grave pit. Right inside the dark north. And then you have these Asiatics holding up the pillars of Atlas. Morocco, you gotta get understanding, you see. So you must know the distinction between kingdoms, just like some people don't know the difference between cities and states. Kingdom is not the empire. The empire is what George was talking about. That's where you're standing. That's why he had to take his oath, do some research on Day Street in New York, D-E-Y. And then he had to come to Philadelphia and take his oath again. And Philadelphia was the Capitolium. Then under Pike, they moved it to Washington to the Seven Hills. Are we clear? <coughs> And so all of them, that's why like the Daughters of American Re uh, Revolution, of which Hillary is one, D.A.R., that's the uh, manual that is designed for citizenship and is used as a pattern around the world. And of course, you have to have a knowledge of the real culture to pass that test. And that's where they do naturalization. Mm -hmm. People have green cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why, you don't have no green card. Mm -hmm. 
Because you're the people of the land. Right. You know, um, we were talking earlier too. Many of you have a story in your families where the Europeans systematically took your family's land. Most of you should be wealthy now. Everyone has in their family the story of the land that the Europeans took through their corporate cities, etc. Yep. I have one, you all have one. So we don't even go through that. Because you're home. <coughs> That's what you must understand. I want to show you something else uh, while we're at it. Um, and prepare uh, questions if you have them. Um, I, now remember when they bombed, when you know they were doing gun running, and you know they bombed that um, embassy in um, Benghazi, right? Mm -hmm. Now, remember we, sh we showed you um, who were ministers, ministers plenipotentiary? Benjamin Franklin? Mm -hmm. Now why is Hillary speaking from the Ben Franklin room? They make no public announcements from the plenipotentiary room. Why is she speaking from the Ben Franklin room? With the Al Moroccan flag behind her. Mm -hmm. Three of them. Trying to pretend they're not still maintaining servitude here, and they absolutely are. That's the Al Moroccan flag, that's the Amity and Commerce flag. And they've been teaching you that that's the national flag. There's the national flag. And she's a DAR. That's to let you know again that the world already knows. You're the only ones that have been kept asleep. Do you understand? We can't fix this. Say again. The daughters of the American Revolution. The point that I'm saying, or that I'm making to you, I want you to recognize that this is not unknown information. It's just not talked about. Are we clear? It's not in their economic and political interest to expose this information. Are we clear? So 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Now, um, so if there's any questions that you have on the media tip, uh, I'm going to go into the Clearfield Doctrine, and which we'll be going into more lengthily later. But I want to, um, this is, brother, in relationship to that secondary constitution, uh -huh. that secret stuff, right? Um, let me see here. We're going to lesson book 14. This is the other half. This is unpublished. Romeo, I'll be dealing with you in the future for this. This is the other half of, four, of book of 14. This, this book, I think this one. This is the one that uh, Imam Issa used when he started the lobbying wars hmm. in New York years ago and he became Dr. York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, he took three paragraphs out of this book to um, start that order. And before he was telling people that the Moors were dead. Mm -hmm. But after certain circumstances took place in New York, he left New York, went to Eaton, to endure to use Lesson Book 14. Mm -hmm. I was at one of their temples, they didn't know who I was because I'm always low key. And he was just rambling on, mm -hmm. tell me about my book. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the politics. This is the second part of that book that has not been published, although I always taught from it, because it's actually the other part of this. Because I knew what I'm operating with. So you gotta, in other words, I don't have finance, but they can't beat this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you gotta think of it. You understand? Now, we're gonna talk about the Clearfield Doctrine. <coughs> Clearfield Doctrine. Use this in everything you all, from traffic tickets to mortgage foreclosures. Are we clear, y'all? Mm -hmm. And see, because you have a lot of people that are not interested in you being liberated, they will try to dispel this information, are we clear? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you some references so that you will know and understand how you're being um, sold out, are we clear? Let me um, bump this up a little bit.
This is from a uh, military training manual. And so when you see politicians going around talking about democracy, you understand that that's the coup of 1871. Mm -hmm. It's also the secret treaty of Rome. Remember I gave you a foundation of the real politics. Now that you can kind of understand how people know that the masses are miseducated and they will talk to you on degrees of ignorance knowing that most of you won't contest or respond. When you fail to respond, it's called acquiescence, tacit acquiescence. You've just given up your rights. Because you're bound to know these things. Soldiers Training Manual TM2000, United States War Department, November 30, 1928. Keep in mind with the fake holiday that they took that took place later in 32, 33, etc. Keep that in mind. All right, with House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress, yeah. in session June the 5th of 33. That fake holiday, in other words, they were still sending our gold to England, but they came here to steal our gold mm. and silver. Mm. But I don't understand why they are here. Mm. There was no religious freedom. They came here to steal the Moors gold. Mm. Mm. So, mm. democracy is a government of the masses, authority derived through mass meetings or any other form of direct expression, results in mobocracy. Mm. Attitude towards property is communistic negating property rights. Attitude towards law is that the will of the majority shall regulate whether it be based upon deliberation or governed by passion, prejudice, and impulse without restraint or regard to consequences and results in dogmagism, dogmagism, pardon me, demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, and anarchy. Now, see why you got anarchy in government? Mm -hmm. They said, like, y'all want democracy. And y'all said, yeah, we want democracy. <laughs> and you were getting it. <laughs> now, here's, here, here it is. Now, here's the republic, right? As set forth in the American Constitution. Remember, even the children, baby in school, right? They'll say, a resolution to flag the United States of America and to the public for what it stands. Mm -hmm. Wait, that don't sound like democracy to me. No. <laughs> See how they play people? <laughs> TM 2000 25, 120, 125, 121, pardon me, Republic. A Republic's authority is derived through the election by the people of public officials best fitted to represent them. Attitude towards property is respect for laws and individual rights and a sensible economic procedure. Attitude towards law is the administration of justice in accord with fixed principles and established evidence with strict regard to consequences. A greater number of citizens and extent of territory may be brought within its compass. Avoids the dangerous extreme of either tyranny or mobocracy. Results in statesmanship, liberty, reason, justice, contentment, and progress. See why you're in trouble? Mm. Because the Constitution is being violated right in your faces and you have not contested because you don't recognize your connection to this government, therefore you're disconnected. It's called cognitive, cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. or disassociation. So you're not stepping up with your responsibility to enforce the treaty and the Constitution, therefore by law, and logically, people don't know the history, don't know that they themselves are white people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They think the European is. How many minutes we got? Five. Five? So real quick, I'm going to take you to a law book and show you what your black leaders ain't telling you. Because they got this information, understand? Don't think they don't. That's why they call leader guys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is what I'm going to give you all on flash drive. So I'll open this up and you'll see it. This is what I'm going to give you. All this on the flash drive. So make sure you've got at least at least the eight gig because you will you're so eat up a couple of anyway. Now here, Black's Law Dictionary one to seven. Right? I'm going to fourth edition. That's the monster, all scholars have that. Do you understand? Um here we go. <coughs> Now, in 
And keep in mind, just as we took, uh, sis, we took you to the dictionary, understand this is back to the point that the Europeans uh, proudly always say, particularly uh, in relationship to their controlling black leader guys, don't worry about them, they'll never compete because they can't read, and the ones who can won't. Mm -hmm. And so um, <coughs> understand what the world knows about you and why you see um, that when you have Asiatics come from other countries, they don't show you their passports because they will have on their passport white white man. Mm -hmm. And they know immediately we start getting anti-Christ. Hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 they want to be black like the brothers, huh? And we start. <laughs> we do. No, you don't want to be black. You're trying to act like the white man because they are white men. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a legal status. Free white persons. Free white persons, quote unquote, refer to in Naturalization Act. So you must know the history. You must know the Naturalization Act. Distinguished from nationalization. Mm -hmm. All right? As amended by Act July 14, 1870, Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, Oath, 1854, 1865, when the Europeans took on the title of white with the Wigamore Party. They used to wear wigs to imitate the Moors. They called the Wigamore Party. Now they become the white party, and they took on the title of white that belonged to you. That's what the Klan is all about. Even the uniform that they used belonged to you. Mm -hmm. Who's scared of that? <laughs> Them uniforms are thousands of years old. Anyway, refer to the Naturalization Act as amended by Act July 14, 1870, has meaning naturally given to it. When first used in one statute, 103 C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European races then commonly counted as white, and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. That's the general perception, and that's what they've taken it down. And this is what it means in law. Free white persons includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. If they're not mixed, they can't be free white people. Do you understand? They've got to have Asiatic blood. Now, free white persons includes Magyars, Lats, and Finns, and the Basque and Albanian, Albanians. Includes Lats, Finns, part the Basque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Read this together, y'all. Free white persons, it does not mean Caucasian race. Repeat it, y'all. It does not mean Caucasian race. Aryan race or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian, Semitic, or Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person in multiple law cases. So you can see that your leaders have been miseducating you. And it's not accidental. It's called a few pieces of silver. Judas factor. And until you get knowledge, you wouldn't believe it. And the civilized world knows this. And you're the only one that's been outside the loop. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back from one fifteen, and then we're going to go until 3 o'clock. So make sure to be back in your seat at one fifteen so we can go ahead and get started. And logically, people don't know the history, don't know that they themselves are white people. Mm -hmm. They think the European is. How many minutes we got? Five. Five? So real quick, I'm going to take you to a law book and show you what your black leaders ain't telling you. Because they got this information, understand? Don't think they don't. That's why they call leader guys. Mm. <laughs> also, this is what I'm going to give you all on flash drive. So I'll open this up and you'll see it. This is what I'm going to give you. All this on the flash drive. So make sure you've got at least at least an eight gig because you will so eat up a couple of them anyway. Now here, Black's Law Dictionary 1 to 7, right? I'm going to 4th edition, 
That's the monster. All scholars have that. Do you understand? Um, here we go. <laughs> Now, and keep in mind, just as we took, uh, sis, we took you to the dictionary, understand this is back to the point that the Europeans are uh, proudly always say, particularly uh, in relationship to their controlling black leader guys, don't worry about them, they'll never compete because they can't read, and the ones who can won't. Mm -hmm. And so, um, understand what the world knows about you and why you see um, that when you have Asiatics come from other countries, they don't show you their passports because they will have on their passport white, white man. And they know immediately we start getting anti-Christ. Hmm. Yeah, 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 they want to be black like the brothers, huh? And we start. <laughs> we do. No, you don't want to be black. Trying to act like the white man because they are white men. Mm -hmm. It's a legal status. Free white persons. Free white persons, quote unquote, refer to in Naturalization Act. So you must know the history. You must know the Naturalization Act. Distinguished from nationalization. All right. As amended by Act July 14, 1870, Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, Oak, 1854, 1865. When the Europeans took on the title of white with the Wigamore Party, they used to wear wigs to imitate the Moors. They called the Wigamore Party. Now they become the White Party, and they took on the title of white that belonged to you. That's what the Klan is all about. Even the uniform that they used belonged to you. Mm -hmm. Who's scared of that? <laughs> Them uniforms are thousands of years old. Anyway, refer to the Naturalization Act as amended by Act July 14, 1870 has meaning naturally given to it when first used in one statute 103 C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European races then commonly counted as white and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. That's the general perception and that's what they've taken it down. And this is what it means in law. Free white persons includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. If they're not mixed, they can't be free white people. Do you understand? They've got to have Asiatic blood. Now, free white persons include Magyars, Lats, and Finns, and the Basque and Albanian, Albanians. Includes Lats, Finns, part of the Basque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. The mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Read this together, y'all. Three white persons. It does not mean Caucasian race. Repeat it, y'all. It does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race, or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian, Semitic, or Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person in multiple law cases. So you can see that your leaders have been miseducating you. And it's not accidental. It's called a few pieces of silver. Judas factor. And until you get knowledge, you wouldn't believe it. And the civilized world knows this. And you're the only one that's been outside the loop. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back from 1.15. And then we're going to go until 3 o'clock. So make sure to be back in your seat at 1.15 so we can go ahead and get started.